Good evening. Good to have you with us tonight on In Focus. I am Tabo Mvuli. Tonight, how to best avoid a Section 139 intervention? And are municipalities better off today after being placed under administration? And are administrators held accountable for their management of municipalities? These are just some of the issues we'll be unpacking with Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Deputy Minister Tembi Ngarimeng tonight. And of course, I'm also joined by Newsroom Africa reporter Bafedi Demweran as well as Nick Mutloung, who is a journalist as well as a resident of Madibeng in the Northwest, to be a part of this conversation. And if you'd like for us to take your question or comment live tonight, send us a WhatsApp message, 72 110 Otherwise, you can tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. Deputy Minister, good evening. Good to have you with us. Good evening, uh, Tavo, and good evening to our viewers. To set the scene for our conversation uh, tonight, I've invited our reporter, Bafedile Morana. Bafedile, good evening. Good to have you with us as well. You have, of course, been covering a number of the stories uh, of what is happening at the Northwest Municipality at this particular time. Uh, in August, uh, I know of three municipalities that were placed under administration because of your work. The Tsuaing Local Municipality, uh, the uh, uh, JB Marx Local Municipality, the Madibeng Local Municipality uh, were uh, placed under administration, and the Ramutseri Moila Municipality also placed under administration the 3rd of August 2020. September 2020, there was this report that 12 out of the 23 municipalities would be placed under administration in the Northwest. What is the situation today? Well, good evening to you, Tabo, and also to our viewers. I understand, according to information that I got from the spokesperson there at the Department of Local Government in the Northwest, that it's only five municipalities that are currently under administration right now, which is Ratlow Local Municipality, JB Max Local Municipality, the Amadibeng, uh, Dr. Ruth Sehomutsibu, but the district municipality in Freiburg, as well as the Zobotla. But of all these five municipalities, Rato, JB Max, and um, Madibeng, as well as the Zobotla, I can confirm to you that the administrators that um, actually have, that have been sent there, um, you know, the, the, the administrators have not set foot in those particular municipalities. In fact, in Ratlow, JB Max, and Ditsobotla. So in Madibeng, last year in 2020, the former MEC, Moloti Joyle, had introduced um, the head of, admin, uh, of the administration, you know, replacing him um, with, um, replaced the, the one who has been sent before in that particular municipality, as he was indicating that the administrator that had been deployed in the first instance failed to meet or to assist that particular municipality as it was expected. So they are saying that it's five municipalities in the Northwest that are currently under administration. But I would ask myself as to why is Doing not part of those municipalities? Because when you go there, you will find two mayors, two municipal managers, two speakers. So how come does the provincial government do not intervene in such instances because if we when we went there the last time we were told that the suspended municipal manager is the only person who has um you know control over the coffers of the municipality and the current one does not have um the authority or does not have you know uh, he cannot access whereas the african national congress in the province um, when we spoke to the IPC coordinator for manager, we said that they are recognizing the acting one. You would ask yourself as to how does that happen? And why would the leadership of the African National Congress in the province and as well as the department would allow such situations to prevail? For instance, in this Obata local municipality, Lechtenberg, the administrator there has also been denied access. Even the matter has been taken to court, you know, whereby the current leadership of the municipality, uh, it is challenging the provincial government for bringing the administrator there. You know, so we are asking ourselves, how does this situation prevail? Why does the, the government of the day, which is the African National Congress, allowing um, the, the, their members, yeah. you know, to, to use the taxpayers' money yeah. to fight 
government when they try to intervene. And, and so, has, as you has, indicated, has, has national in any of these situations invoked its powers <laughs> of a section 139 subsection 7 to intervene? Because clearly province is not delivering or performing on that particular mandate of section uh, 139, 4 and 5. We have never seen the government, the national department coming down here in the Northwest province. For instance, if, with all the, the examples that I've cited, you know, we expected the national government or the provincial government to go to the national government to say that, please come down here in the province to assist us with these uh, issues. But we have never seen that. For instance, in Kheta um, Refir uh, local municipality, for the very first time in South Africa, we saw the community members taking authority of running the affairs of the municipality after the Northwest High Court granted them the authority and those powers to say that now you can run the water and sewer plants as the community members and the municipalities expected to ensure that they pay you as well as the experts that you will hire as the community members. Because they took the matter to court as the ratepayers association and community members saying that we are sick and tired of the municipality that is failing to fulfill its mandate by providing us with services. Now the court had granted the, the residents, you know, to take over the running affairs. For the very first time in South Africa, we've seen something like that. And we've never seen the national government or we've never had the provincial government saying that they have requested assistance from from the national department, right. you know, to come down in the province to assist. But there's a lot that is I know, that, I know there's a lot that we want to unpack. Stay with us. We'll come back to you in a moment. But uh, let me bring in Nick. Uh, Nick, as a journalist and uh, having been in Madibeng and uh, for the, as long as you have been, uh, I, in, in my own reporting, I believe that uh, at least uh, the northwest uh, province has invoked section 139 administration uh, in at least 22 or at least 22 times it failed uh, municipalities with no single improvement to show for it what is your experience nick you can unmute for us if you can please sorry about that good evening table thank you very much and good evening to the viewers uh, Tab, it's very interesting. You must remember Northwest, it's a mining province. Now, if you look at what's happening in the province, is that every politician, they just want to come to the province just to steal from the province. They've forgotten about the people. You look at the municipalities, yes, they bring in administrators. What do they do? Nothing. There's no reports that will expose the corruption that's happening within the municipalities. You find within the municipalities, the same employees of municipalities are the same members of ANC. Now, who's got the power there? Because clearly you can see even the mayors, they don't have the power. The administrators don't have the power. They get appointed by the same ANC to, 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 to clean up the mess of ANC. But what they do, there's nothing they're cleaning up. It's the same problem. You know, it's 28 years. The people of Northwest, they still, we're still talking about water problem. We still talk about service delivery. Now, if you look at the municipalities, all those uh, who have uh, uh, the appointed administrators, where are the reports? There's not even one, not even one single person that's been prosecuted for corruption within these municipalities. Now, you ask yourself the question, what's the point of hitting administrators? What's the point, even like the, the, the ruling party, ANC, you know, they forgotten about the people. They are there for themselves, for their comrades. They just want tenders. They just want to loot from this province and they just leave. They don't care about people. The same thing, why do we let even administrators come in? They'll spend money to do the reports, but those reports don't get published. Not even one single person is prosecuted. What's the point? And are, are the reasons given for placing these municipalities under administration adequate? I mean, do, do we even get adequate reasons as to why they are placed under administration as opposed to maybe uh, political agendas or political infighting? It's always the same reason. The municipality is not performing. It's 28 years. If you, you come to Maribeng, Maribeng is supposed to be your next drawback. It's got mines which are paying royalties. It's supposed to be developed. But if you come to Maribeng, it's a graveyard 
politicians, they just come in here and loot. And they loot through uh, the municipalities. You remember the VBS scandal? Madi Beng, it was part of the VBS scandal as well. They got involved. If you look at the D account, you come even the, the traditional uh, authorities here, you find politicians, they come even to steal from the traditional communities as well. Deputy Minister, that's why we brought you here, to come and help us with this conversation. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll let you breathe. And then let us in on what your thoughts are, particularly about this 139 intervention and why it has not worked since 1998. Welcome back. You're live with us tonight here on In Focus, Newsroom Africa, Channel 405. Dr. Deputy Minister Tembing Karibeng with us, and Newsroom Africa reporter Bafedi Lemuran, as well as Nick Mutlo, who is a journalist and resident in Madibeng. The focus is on the Northwest, uh, particularly with the two, but broadly the administration uh, section uh, uh, or constitution section 139 and that intervention and its effectiveness. Deputy Minister, good to have you with us. Of course, we're going to come and talk to that question uh, of uh, the uh, section 139, how it's implemented or whether constitutional provisions are strictly adhered to uh, following the constitutional court ruling that in Swane, for example, it was unwarranted. But before we get there, the constitution obligates national and province to not only intervene, but to monitor and support local government uh, in doing what it needs to do. Now, since 1998, 140 Section 139s have been instituted. This is according to the Financial and Fiscal uh, Commission, which in itself says a lot about the integrity and the effectiveness of the monitoring and support that National needs to be doing. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tabo, and good evening to our viewers once more. Uh, you're correct. Section 154 of the Constitution mandates uh, COCTA and provincial COCTAs to support municipalities. Further on, to put on measures like uh, your, your, your processes of ensuring that on a quarter to quarter basis there's interim assessment coupled with national treasury to look into the aspects of the mfma which is what brings the financial resources into municipalities from the grants and then authorizing municipalities to also collect uh, revenues and rates and taxes to make a municipality sustainable now there are broadly different issues which dictates for a municipality to be placed under administration even under section 154 yeah. it's a section of the constitution as well which says upon receiving a quarter report a MEC can institute section 106 yeah. which is the assessment of that municipality informed by yeah. section 71 report yeah. which a municipality must fill on a monthly basis send to national treasury and compile a quarter report to council which the minister via the MEC receives yes. in terms of the status of how the municipality is functioning. Yes. On the basis of those two, then the, 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 the assessment provides and indicate if there's institutional capacity yes. that needs to be given, for example, and you'll find that the department forwards either from a provincial level to a national or from a national level to municipality A, human capital, Mm -hmm. so that they are able to provide and, 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 and give the solutions that are fine to be lacking. Yeah. Now, the second element is that you may find that municipalities themselves are unable to attract the capacity that they need to perform some of the functions. Yeah. The third element, rural municipalities are unable, as part of the law, to even generate the income to make them financially viable as municipalities. But, but then there's an element. Why do we keep on going for 28 years? Why do we keep on going for 28 years? It's a reality. It's a reality, a system Tabo. that is not working, right? It's a reality. Because, no, no, no. Uh, uh, as, as you're putting it, so if, if you're getting quarterly reports... I'm getting there. The quarterly I'm, reports I'm themselves them. should be able to tell you that that local municipality yes. is not performing and yes. therefore these are the actions that Hence need to be Hence we are taken. talking about 142 which firstly there have been attempts to place them under administration. Some have been able to recover, some are repaid uh, offenders, some because of the economic structure of the area, they will not be able to uh, even generate income because the economy of that area is unable to make the municipality sustainable. 
So it's not that every municipality that is under administration is because they've bought some particular funds and they've not used them appropriately. So there are different categories. And this report, we put then after the under administration, a financial recovery report where municipalities guided from what you are getting, this is how much you could subsidize your issues. I mean, nobody talks about a poor municipality which doesn't collect, which still offer free basic services mm. because of what the constitution obliges us mm. to do. Mm. I mean, the state's SA report now says we have improved in terms of free basic services by over 21% on all the four well, categories we, 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 of we, we basic spoke services. On a, on a different report yes, that there are two million indigent uh, yeah, families indigent. that should be who, getting free who, electricity, who? but out of them, yeah. only 900,000 are getting exactly. it. Exactly. That was just in a quarter, in the 900,000. But we are having over 400 that receives that. But if a municipality does not get that income, where does it get it? It takes it from its grant. The grant which is supposed to do a road, fill a pothole, ensure that there's water, etc. Because it's a human right for a kuku somewhere to receive water. Right. Now, it can be a blanket uh, approach that they are all not functional. Uh, because there is also a difference between what you have placed under Section 139 and a municipality which is at high risk. Right. And we need to be able to, dis to, to separate the discussion and arrive at all the there decisions. Are five but what is there, the municipality? Five currently what is that, the system that, 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 are, that are under administration in, in the Northwest. True. The fact that they are under administration yes. tells us that your early warnings didn't work. Yes. The early warnings are to detect problems so that you bring intervention, which is what Section 139 is about. No, you would have brought Section 139 is too late. No, 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 it's no, too Chabu. late, no, no, Deputy Chabu. Minister. No, At Section no, 139, Chabu. you are now no, intervening. No, no, no. You yes. need to monitor and support That is what I said. That's Section 154. Look, you, you may not be able... Let, let me give an example of a municipality in a rural area, which has never had... A technical yeah. director. Let's, Not let, because let, it doesn't let's talk, let's talk the about the specifics. Let's talk yes. about Zwaying, which was raised by Bafedile today. What's happening in the Zwaying municipality? What have you put as national, as a monitoring and support mechanism that should have warned you in time about that situation? There? Well, look, the, the difference here with regard to the example of uh, uh, Zwaying is the, the department was able to move in, do the assessment, assist. It is not a service delivery problem per se. It is a political instability issue, which has led into councillors themselves being divided. Hence, Ba Fedile was saying there are two mayors, two speakers, and two uh, uh, theoretical leadership in, in Pence. Right. So it's more or less like what you find in many other municipalities where even different parties pull one another, Nelson Mandela pay, it's happening in any other municipality right. you could find that. Right. Which is one of the elements, by the way, why you put municipalities under administration. Right. But can the minister fire a councillor? No. Yes, a councillor is forwarded you care. by a because particular party. You can take them through wha a wha code wha of wha conduct. Why are you not invoking no, no, no. such a one, three, one No, 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 Tabo. Because understand now the you're legislation. Saying, you, you are saying no, no, you no, have Tabo. given the province the opportunity no. to intervene, no, no, but Tabo. province is failing to intervene. No. The constitution gives you power, therefore, yes. as national, to then By the in. way, the process is run together by the province and national. Hence, the minister or COCTA give concurrence at the national level of the action that the province is indicating after it has performed Section 106. So it's not an isolated process. MECs are not left to act on their own. In fact, in Northwest, there have been reports where the, the MECs will request the minister to put certain municipalities under administration yeah. and municipalities is, why, will why take the minister. Is that not supposed well, to be the that, process? That's the process all the time. I'm yes. just, if, you, if you could have allowed me to unpack that point is where the report is received by the minister but the municipality takes action yeah. and say we do not think it's appropriate. Swane is one good example. Right. And the reason I a report in Swane that we're going to put uh, that uh, uh, municipality under administration? But it, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have meant that the, the MEC's interpretation was entirely correct because one of the mandates of the municipality is to approve your budget because the entire budget, if it's not approved, is a regular expenditure. But and the what, AG what, what will was, come and say, the, how are the, you supposed to spend that? What was the view that? of National when they received that uh, report from uh, the MEC to say, no, we are placing it under administration? No, our view is that you can't run a municipality which is acting on the basis of illegality if you do not have a budget that is approved. 
how are you going to spend? That's but a process the, that you must sit. And you all you, know. You, you, well, it, it's you the view the of the court. We you hold the policy. The we will go and review it. it. Your own well, policy. it's okay. We'll go and look into it and go and interpret it. But the legislation itself says a budget. It even gives a date. A budget by each and every council must be approved by the 30th of July. Every financial year, you receive a budget. National Treasury is not allowed to transfer that fund. Right. AG will come and rule it as a regular and expenditure. Now, let, then let's talk and then about and how many times uh, did Swale fail talk, then, if, to if the pro, adopt the pro, the that provisions budget. that circumscribe uh, what needs to be done, where they are adhered to. For example, you need to first tell the municipality that you're at fault and give them an opportunity to yes. rectify the fault. Yes. Come back and say to them, uh, you still have not recognized And remember, that's a quarter, this, by the and way. This is, this, is, this is what we need to do now. Yes, and, right. and that's the process that we do on a day-to-day. -day. Hence, I'm saying, if you go, for example, to the state's uh, uh, assessment report, just released now in March, uh, uh, June 2021, indicates the improvement that municipalities have made in terms of delivery, including those municipalities which are under Section 139. Yeah. It doesn't mean there's no water. Uh, uh, completely in areas where people are under administration. No, no, I, it doesn't I, I mean there's no electricity. The, thi the, things, there are the, thing, areas. the things that Bafedile has been revealing about those no, municipalities no. I'll tells go to you the that there, I'll is, go to the there is issue. no service delivery. No. Let's take a break. When we, come back, when, 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 when we come, come back, back, we want to unpack that a little bit more. Cocktail Deputy Minister Temi Garibek with us tonight here on In Focus News from Africa Channel 405. Do stay with us and let us in on what uh, your thoughts are of this conversation and uh, this intervention. Does it work? Is it adequate enough to respond to the challenges of uh, service delivery? Uh, and of course, we've got Buffy Lee Moran and uh, Nick McLoan with us as well tonight. Do stay on. In Focus continues. In. Welcome back. You're live with us tonight here on News in Africa, Channel 405. In Focus tonight, Deputy Minister uh, Tembi Nkadimeng, and uh, we're talking Section 139 intervention. Is this adequate? Is this the correct measure? Or monitoring and support could be the tool we need to avoid this intervention. But before the break, uh, Bafedi, the, the deputy minister says uh, in the places where they've put administrators, actually water is being uh, provided, electricity is there, there's service delivery. Is that your experience? Um, I'll give an example that in Ketleng Refir, um, a week after... Um, the MEC of COCTA at the time, Moluki Joile, intervened with some delegates from the provincial government. The very same Red Payers Association, they went to court again to say that now we have reached a certain agreement with the government, but still government is failing to fulfill the mandate as they have promised. So that's one example. In Rato local municipality, um, sometime around July, we saw the um, SIU pounds in the offices there saying that they're investigating over 25 million, which was used to procure PPE. But when you go there, we were shocked and surprised to see community members getting water ex exactly outside the municipal offices. Communities will walk as far as over 10 kilometers to come to the municipal gate to get water there. Last week, uh, about two weeks ago, we were in Madibeng local municipality where the community of Mututung, a, a certain section, uh, had been cut off um, electricity uh, because they were accusing them of bridging electricity and also uh, law buying, amongst others. So those are the examples, Tabo, yeah. to say that um, there's a lot that is happening, although the deputy minister is saying that there's an improvement in those municipalities let's, that are in go place to under let's go to Section to I mean, that is, that is the worst kind of uh, lack of service delivery, where no, civil actually, society as, has to say, we we're going to cut and we're going to take As to take we got this cut issue. towards the break, I wanted to get into the headline issue with regard to water provision and the partnership. And Bafedile confirms it. It's not a partnership. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. The, 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 the community and in fact, had to rise up. that's what a municipality is about. It has got three stakeholders. That's what a municipality is. That is why we're the only sector that goes out to the community and talk to them through the integrated development plan. We're the only sphere in government. 
You have never had a I, minister I, of police. What's up, what's up yes, marketing? that's the thing. I'm just saying communities are encouraged to participate and lead in a municipality that governs them. That is why council meetings are open meetings. So you can go to your council meeting and sit and hear the plan. But Bafedila herself says the MEC sent a delegation to Khetli. Only in a week, the community was back to court. She is saying, in Madibe, the SIU was there. Who summons that? Because that's the state. That's the responsibility of Section 154. So you can, what I'm trying to say is, it is not that the state is saying, let it all go, it's, it, it's done, we don't care about the residents of Madibeng or of Khetleng River Municipality or anywhere else. We intervene, we bring issues that need to be resolved in all the municipalities, not only under Section 39, including the distressed municipalities, which you don't talk about them today because they're not yet part of the 42. 42 out of 257 municipalities can, yes, it's a bad mark, but it can never be an indicator that it's dysfunctionality across the spectrum. I'm raising a point which says, yeah. even though Madibeng is under administration now, or Hetleng, or any, they are distressed, there are services that are being provided now. It's not a black city yeah. now in Madibeng. Yes, we're not saying we're happy about it, we're intervening. Yeah. The monitoring aspect of it, it's done. But remember, it's an interrelated, interdependent spheres of government. Yeah. Municipalities must run, champion themselves, you assess them, you want five four in terms of support, and pull out when they could be. There are instances where the, 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 the uh, cocktails have intervened. When they pulled out, you find that the municipality is still unable to sustain itself. You yeah. go through the AG report now yeah. of 2019-2020. Uh, it tells you that there is an increase reports of municipalities which moved from a, a, a disclaimer to qualified, from qualified to unqualified. So there is more or less a 29 to 32 percent yeah. increase with regard to what is happening. And that is because of the district development uh, model we'll, we'll, of the African we'll National the Congress. In, in there wouldn't be let, let, any other a, thing. Let's take a question from Vincent in Madibeng who sent it through WhatsApp. What does Deputy Minister mean when she says rural municipalities are anticipated or incapacitated, I beg your pardon, in generating okay. income? As Madibeng residents, we have experienced and the coolest experience under the leadership of the ANC. They can't say Madibeng is incapacitated in generating income, whereas our economic stream is from mining, tourism, manufacturing, and agriculture. Uh, we are under administration because of corruption. Well, Madibeng is not a rural municipality. It's a secondary city, uh, my brother. But I understand the question. Now you have got rural municipalities. You go to the Eastern Cape. You go to Gazulu Natal. And they make around 105 of the collection of the 257. Me and you knows that's where our grandmother stays. Me and you knows that's where our Sasa beneficiary stays. Me and you knows that's where government provides free basic services. So what it means, this municipality, from what it gets, as an allocation from National Treasury, it gives it out back to its communities for free, yet these communities can't buy. They receive six kiloliters, that's 6,000 liters, free per month. Yeah, that's and another, that municipality that, That's pays. another conversation we'll bring yes, you in for yes, whether or not that yes, is enough, yes. six kiloliters Well, you see, you actually want to increase it so that this municipality must pay more. W it's Fair. not me who wants to increase Fair. it, I'm saying whether Fair. the I'm people just saying, who even that, that municipality that is, that is under administration right. now, the granny receives that 6,000 uh, free uh, Deputy kiloliters. Minister says, well... It's an integrated effort. It's a good thing. There are three partners in this. National government, uh, civil province, society, yes. uh, province, and you guys must all come in and uh, uh, literally come up with the solutions yourself as communities. Can I ask a question, Tabo? Yes. Yeah. I don't think Deputy Minister has been to Madibeng. Uh, I, I think she's talking about Brett and how the BS broke them. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're talking about Madibeng, we do have, it's, it's, you know, it's a rural uh, municipality. We have a lot of rural areas. And when she says there's water in Madibeng, uh, I don't think Deputy Minister has been in Madibeng. There are areas that where there's no water. And I think the Deputy Minister 
they've been, uh, she's, she's been lied to by the reports that's been written to her. She needs to come to Madibeng physically. She needs to go to all the areas, rural areas in Madibeng, and see that the people, there's, no, there's only few tap, uh, the tap, uh, uh, taps that works that people can receive water. But the majority of the places, the same comrades that she's serving are the ones destroying the system in Madibeng. They are the ones who are tendering for the tenders to distribute dirty water with trucks to those communities. But you ask yourself, when she says the water has improved, which system, which water, which, which Madibeng is she talking about? Because I'm in Madibeng, and you know, I've been covering the stories of Madibeng and talking to the community, going to those communities. I'm even talking about uh, flushing toilets. We've got communities which are only 20 kilometers away from Pretoria. Yeah. They still don't use flushing toilets. They still use pits toilets. Nick, Nick, tell us, I, I, I will just... tell us specifically so that the deputy minister can respond to it. Tell us specifically which, Maka... which, which areas are those. Makau is just opposite Harangua, just opposite Gauteng. You know, you go to certain areas in Tukling as well. You've got Damonsville. You've got Bapong. You've got areas. You know, there's, there's a lot of communities which don't have even flushing toilets. Now, last we've been even on, in Sonop. Sonop, it's, you know, it's your white community area, you know, but there's another problem there. There's not even service delivery. It doesn't even fall under Madibeng, but it's sitting right in the middle of Madibeng. And the national government, they know about it for almost four years, but they haven't even moved Sonop to be under Madibeng because those even, uh, that community don't even get service delivery. They're on their own, but they're sitting right in the middle of Madibeng, only five kilometers away from Bredstown. I think Deputy Minister, she's been lied to. The reports that she's reading, it's all lies. She needs to come to Maribe. She needs to come, spend a weekend. I, I agree with the, with, the, with the person who sent a WhatsApp message saying, Maribe is a tourist attraction place. People from different provinces, they come here for holiday destinations. Now, it, we've got mines. Now, but if you look at Maribe, the roads in Maribe, they're terrible. You can see that the problem is that the municipalities, they've got a problem of management. Because why? The HR hires the comrades. People are not qualified to manage uh, the municipality. Mm. That's where the problem is. Now, the national government knows about this problem. Why they don't just come and clean up Mali Bay? Strip, strip all that HR, hire people with qualification, and they must remove comrades out of a uh, municipality. Yeah. The comrades or the politicians, they must stay there at the council. But right. when it comes to the logistics of the municipality, they must hire qualified Nick, people. Nick, Nick let's, get, let's get the, uh, the deputy minister to respond. Let's talk about Macau. Let's talk about Motuitlu. Let's there, talk there's about There's no Sonor. confusion here. Have, have you visited Macau? There have is, you walked the streets? There is no confusion, Tabo. And there are no reports which don't re reflect the correction levels of poverty and improvement that the people of South Africa needs or are undergoing and needs to be assisted on. Hence, I was quoting the recent stats SA report. People who walk house by house count you, put you in the population register for government to budget properly for you. Yeah. We have got 257 municipalities. You only have eight metros. Yeah. It is only in these areas, even today, the categorization of metros is now moving with an inclusion of ruralities in them. Mm. So all the other municipalities coming down out of these eight have rural areas. Mm -hmm. rural areas which are deprived. So you may have a small Brett's area, which actually will be used in cross-subsidization because those who are staying at Brett's are the yeah. ones who are paying for rates and taxes yeah. to pay to the municipality. But the municipality must take that yeah. combined with uh, the funds that it gets from National Treasury through grants and pay for the people who are in the rural areas yeah. to be able for them to receive but, services. But that's that's how the do, system do, do of you government works. That, right? that it, it is an insult to people who are sitting in Macau when you are here on, on public television and saying, well, there's a service delivery, when they are not well, look, uh, receiving sanitation look, uh, services, look, going over a toilet. It's a mixed bag. Right. I'm saying to you the Stats SA report. Then it means for Stats South Africa to say well, 55 million is an insult. But the category of those people have been broken down. Government knows how many percentage have you been able to improve on. Yeah. I'm saying in between year 2019 to 2020, yeah. we have removed, for example, in waste uh, 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 and sewer with about 7.2%.
is the mega improvement of government, connecting more people to access of ablution and bringing their dignity. That does not mean there is still no road to be made. Let's take an example of a municipality yeah. we'll that to, has we'll, we'll, a we'll, keen we'll, audit. We'll come, we'll, come, we'll come to that. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, I've got uh, some callers coming in as well. When we come back from the break, uh, we'll be able to take that page uh, joining us uh, in Welcome. And of course, the Deputy Minister will answer more of your questions. Send them through 072-110-5584. Otherwise, you can tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. Of course. Uh, looking at whether or not there are abuses also of this constitutional mechanism to serve political agendas. The question we'll put to the Deputy Minister in a moment. Stay with us. Back here live with us tonight here on In Focus News in Africa, Channel 405. The conversation on uh, municipalities under administration out of the 257 or so. We have 42 currently under administration. But since 1998, at least 140 times has that intervention been invoked yet. We say very little about the improvement, uh, particularly in those municipalities. But you're about to make an example for me of municipalities that are on paper having the right kind of look as far as the Auditor General's report is concerned. Look, I'm just trying to categorize that spending is on the basis of the availability of resources. And those resources, which means we must allocate for them and account for them properly. Now, the essence here is you never receive, like anywhere else in the world, a budget that is equal to the need. So, Madibeng municipality, for example, yeah. would want to electrify every village that is there, but right. they wouldn't have that. Right. Now, they are under Section 139. You possibly say they are corrupt, they are bad, all what uh, yeah. uh, my brother was listing. Yeah. Now, let's just juxtapose what does not being in a box of the 42 Section 139 mean. It means you are a guru learning municipality. The only metro in South Africa with a clean audit yeah. currently. Yeah. With no fruitless expenditure. Yeah. With no uh, uh, irregular expenditure. But does it mean everybody in Tembisa has got what he or she needs? No. It means as the uh, mayor budgets, he moves from one milestone to the other. Right. Now the 72.2% increase in waste collection does not mean that everybody else yeah. in Madibing is covered. It means you cover 7.2 with what you I, have. I get your point. In the next I get your mile, point. you cover the rest with what you have. I mean, it's, we, we, it's a we, we, Which is a question that we'll come to in a moment around the allocations from national to, to, to the municipalities and whether the allocation is, is the correct, particularly the proportions that you give to rural communities uh, compared to uh, urban communities with uh, ability to generate their own revenue. But hold that question for a moment. Let's go to Paige. Paige uh, calling us from Belcom. Paige, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Good evening, sir. Good, good, Can I good. Put question? Yeah, go ahead. Deputy Minister is listening. Yes, I just want to ask the Honorable Minister whether all those uh, administrators that, that have been deployed to these functional municipalities have they given him the report of how did those municipalities go to where they are today? Uh, what was the problem and any consequence management for my administration, uh, for administrators, and consequence management for politicians, which did not uh, provide enough uh, oversight on the administrators? So is there anyone that has been charged or, or disciplined for getting my party to where they are, and, and have yeah. they received any report from administrators? Yeah. And well, lastly, P how Paige, why, do why, they why particularly? That? Why particularly do you ask the question? What is your experience in the Free State then, about an administrator? Uh, <laughs> the experience is the party will be placed under administration, and someone will be deployed, and we find that the very same person that is deployed, uh, uh, deployed to the municipality. Uh, the recycling leader who come from other municipality that has is functional itself, mm -hmm. and now you'll find uh, uh, that uh, there are no report, there are no consequences. Everything stays the same. Everybody stays on his position. It's just that the state has is under administration, but there's nothing that happens to anyone. You'll never hear that uh, someone is being charged for a bad administration, all that stuff. I've never right. heard that. All right. F final part yeah. of your question. Uh, my, my, my final part of the question was, how do they choose the administrators? Okay. What credentials do the administrators have 
Fant that is right fantastic. Yeah. Great question, okay. Paige. Thank you very much for getting in touch. Paige, they're calling us from Valcom. The main reason or the main intent of a Section 139, you would know, is for that uh, at, uh, municipality to be assessed financially, what the situation is, draft a recovery plan, implement the recovery plan, and I suppose also report on that recovery plan and whether or not it was successful or not. And Paige is asking the question, have you received those reports? Those uh, reports are received yeah. periodically, both by provinces and national. Two, Paige might have not had it. COGTA itself has transferred 1,882 cases to law enforcement agencies. It's a mixed bag. They don't come only from Section 139 municipalities. They come even in some functional municipalities where some things didn't go right and in distressed municipalities where they are unable to generate the income for themselves, including councillors in there who have possibly would have violated the law and the law in, 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 in enforcement agencies are dealing with. But Fedilo was telling us just now about an uh, example of her walking into Madibeng municipality and finding SIU uh, uh, in place. So those reports are received. There is a criterion on how you select administrators. Yes, it does need some improvement like any other is thing. Is it political? It's not. It's not political. It is most, in most instances, uh, professionals and administrators in their field, depending on what a municipality's problem is. If it's financial, you look mostly for financial people with such type of experience to be able to, uh, to lead. In that number of people who would have been charged, as I'm saying, it's a mixed bag. I may not yeah. be able to single out how many let, let, Let's talk about something specific But it here. is let's very talk, wrong. When you're no, talking no, no, about no, no, the no, report. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. It is very wrong uh, for the discussion of today to behave as if there is no intention and even movement with regard to eradication of, po of, 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 I mean, of, of corruption in ensuring that there is an ethical and accountable state. We can actually spend the whole day just at the municipal level. And it has been seen, it has been reported on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Granted, granted, yes. we have been seeing, and we in have, that we line, have been some the reason why the president but let, 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 announced... Let's, let's talk about this perspective specifically before we move on. You say you do receive a report after the administrator has intervened, right? We are, of course, talking the case of uh, Northwest, but we're also talking the case of Tswami because of the Concord ruling, where the now mayor says when he came in after the administrator had been in there, the uh, metro was left four billion in the red, if I'm correct. Did you receive that kind of a report? Well, he, he, it must be submitted. I mean, the court no, no, no. hearing from the administrator. Came from, the, from the administrator, yes. yes, you receive reports. What, what did well, the, the administrator the, say look, in that particular instance? The, the administrator also found fault that were happening in the municipality. Right. And we also and, and received did, those did, reports. Of course and we're investigating the, admi them. the administrator, of course, comes in to fix the fault. Exactly. Did the administrator yeah. fix the fault or did the to administrator... To a certain extent, to a large extent, more actually. in the red than when To a large extent. Right. They were also in the red, yes. according to the report of the administrator. Right. Hence, there was no water and no repair in Amman Skral, right. for example, even before the administrator. Who talks about the initiatives of what the administrator did in trying to solve that problem? Right. Redirecting the funds which were supposed to be in some other areas to go and deal with those issues. The fact of the matter is, Tuane, like any other municipality, was given through its council custodianship of running its own affairs with all the rights and powers, and they could not exercise those powers. Yeah. When they couldn't exercise those powers, uh, MEC is supposed to move on. So it's not a really issue where that the deputy minister is body thinks, ah, Mr. Mzuli, I want to place him under administration. It's a report. Yeah. Now National Treasury says we have finished the end of August with three, four extensions which have been given. If you will remember, the late Jeff Makubu once asked for an extension to adopt yes, a budget. Uh, Why was he doing that? It is because it's illegal yeah. to transfer money. So why are we saying MEC Maile, it was correct for him to transfer money to Tuan? And what else do, could he have done in such an instance where the, the custodians of people who have been given the responsibility of running that are failing even on extensions and extensions and extensions? And what does that mean? It means if there's no money allocated through a system that MEC Maile yeah. must do, 
then the community but, but, ought but to, to enable to Paige's that. Question, to Paige's question, now you've received the report and the municipality or the metro, shall I say, is more in the red than when it was when it came in. What's the consequence for the administrator? But remember, as I'm saying, in this 1,800 1, odd cases, you don't receive just one report. Because remember, when an administrator is appointed, he's given terms of reference of what he or she is supposed to do. Because that is on the basis of the report that we have done in terms of the assessment of that municipality. What are their weaknesses and what are their strengths so that you could capitalize on them and rework yeah. on what the municipality is about. So he just does not report once. Yeah. It's a periodical. Yeah. You find that in some instances a municipality can be placed under administration for six months and you pull out. In some other instances it's even long and extended. It's on the basis of the reports that you are receiving which comes from the administrator itself. Yeah. You also will have problems, allegations, and issues which are raised against the administrator. Yeah. Some you refer them to the assistance of the AG in their provincial offices, and they will also give reports which we act on. And that what informs the financial recovery plan, yeah. which is given into distress. Let's, let, let, let's take it back to uh, uh, Bafidi. Bafidi, do you want to just clear something? The, the SIU was in um, um, uh, Radlow. It was in Ratlow. Yeah. It was in Ratlow, not Matibi. What, what was happening in Ratlow? What's the situation with the mayor there? Well, um, when we spoke to the mayor there, um, Sehamed Tintagi, she has alluded that about seven councillors of the African National Congress, since the administrator was appointed, they have never pitched for work. And the administrator also has not set foot in that municipality. The residents there are struggling with water. Um, I indicated earlier that at the time when the SIU arrived in that morning at the offices, we saw a number of community members coming outside the municipality to fetch water. Some of them, they told us they walked about over 10 kilometers to come to the municipality, um, you know, entrance to get water there. So. They are saying that it is a dire state of affairs for them um, because if you recall very well, I can't recall the year quite well. The children there were found in one of the farms in the free state, uh, young children who were supposed to be at school at that particular time. They were found in that particular site working in the farms and they had to be taken back home. Yeah. That's, that's one thing, Tabo, to indicate to you that that municipality is one disadvantaged municipality, but the authorities there, they've spent over 25 million to procure PPE. But when we look as to what exactly did they procure, there's absolutely nothing because even water, people there, they don't have water when people are expected to use water frequently during the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic. So many issues. Unfortunately, Deputy Minister, I am out of time. So oh, I'm going to give okay. you 30 seconds for you to, 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 to give us your final thoughts on the question of the Section 139 intervention. The is section it an adequate and effective tool? It is an adequate intervention, particularly that we have adopted the district development model whose intention is to ensure that it capacitates, but it also acts as a center of excellence for local municipalities, 44 of them plus the metros, to be able to ensure that they fast track the service delivery in we partnership are, are, with those uh, uh, local municipalities. So we'll still support and, and, and develop them. And things appreciate will your time. under <laughs> the national program.